Hi there, welcome to theclearskinessentials.com. I'm Natasha St. Michael, and today I wanna to talk about skincare routine for irritated skin. What to do when you're, you've used a skincare product that has severely irritated your skin. If you saw my last video, you know that I was trying out a bunch of products from the detox market's Best Green Beauty Box, and I got a terrible reaction to one of their products. And my skin was red, it was raw, it ached, it stung, it hurt. And I thought this would be a perfect time to share with you what I've been doing over the past few weeks to get my skin back to balance and what I do in my skincare routine, plus also a few lifestyle and diet tips as well. So let's first talk about skincare routine. Now, I'm gonna be the first to admit that a lot of times when I have like some sort of skin reaction or skin problem, I just naturally gravitate towards trying to find a product to fix it. And I will tell you right now that nine out of 10 times going to using a skincare product to heal your skin's issue doesn't work, okay? And a lot of times it makes your skin worse, it can actually delay the healing, all of that. And the one thing I've learned over and over and over again over the years is less is more. And this is something I have to remind myself every single time I have any kind of skin reaction is don't go near the products, let your skin heal, trust your skin, trust your body. Your skin is an organ. It wants to heal itself. It doesn't want to have this like irritation and reaction. It wants to balance itself out. And a lot of times when we're using a bunch of skincare products on it, even if we have like the best of intentions is that it can make it worse. So that's the first thing I do is just remind myself is I need to cut down and cut back on the skincare products I'm using and basically have a very minimalist approach to my skincare. And pretty much what I do is either I won't wash my face at all and I'll just use cold water to rinse my face in the morning or in the evening, or I will use a very, 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 very gentle cleanser if I need to. And I will moisturize my skin with usually a one ingredient facial oil. Um, sometimes I might use a moisturizer if I really feel like my skin is, is super like dry and, and nothing's helping it and, and it really needs something to coat it. But in general, I much prefer using a one ingredient facial oil. And I'll go through what, what I use and I find helps me the most. So basically, my skincare routine first thing in the morning is in the morning because I'm using very minimal pot products, I don't need to wash my face in the morning. And I exercise every morning. So what I do first thing in the morning is exercise. And I find just the act of exercising and sweating is actually cleaning my skin out from the inside out. And I sweat, I exercise, and then afterwards I will rinse my face with cold water over the sink. I don't ever rinse or wash my face in the shower because I find the shower water to be quite harsh when it comes out of the, out of the shower head. And I find that if you're having like a hot or warm shower, that steam in the shower can dehydrate my skin, especially if my skin is irritated. So what I like to do is rinse it with cold water before my shower and I prefer to take a cold shower when my skin is irritated. This just brings down the chance of getting dehydrated and more red and irritated skin. And I try and take a quick shower and I don't put my head under the shower head when I'm showering. Okay, so I have my quick shower and then afterwards I will, when my skin is still damp, I'm gonna use a facial oil to moisturize my skin. And personally, what I've been really liking using is from The Ordinary, and this is their 100% plant-derived hemisqualane oil. And this is a very, very lightweight facial oil. And I find it really good, like I've got acne prone skin and I don't like to wear heavy oils, especially during the day, because I find if I wear heavy oils during the day, like dirt, debris, like all sorts of stuff starts like accumulating on my skin. And so I don't like that. That I like to use an oil that really absorbs into my skin and I find this really helps to moisturize and hydrate my skin. And it's so lightweight, it absorbs within minutes. And I also find it to be very benign. Like I find it doesn't irritate my skin at all. Nothing, you know, it's just a one ingredient, super lightweight, great facial oil. And that's what I'll do first thing in the morning is use that. Now, what about sunscreen? Now, I have to say that I'm in a catch situation because I live in Bali, Indonesia. It's very hot here. In my home, we have a lot of sunlight that comes through. Our home is like open. We have a garden in the middle of our house. So we get a lot of sun. 
And when my skin is really irritated, I would prefer not to use sunscreen. If I was living back in Canada for a few days while my skin is healing from being irritated, I wouldn't use a sunscreen. You know, it's a few days. It's not like I'm going a few months without using sunscreen. It's just a few days until my skin is like normalized. I find sunscreens can be irritating, but because I live in a very sunny, hot environment and let's say I'm going out, I need to wear a sunscreen or else I'm going to burn my skin and make it worse. So I recommend using a mineral sunscreen and not a chemical sunscreen. And the reason why is because a mineral sunscreen sits on the surface of your skin, whereas a chemical sunscreen needs to be absorbed into your skin to deflect the UV rays. And if it's sitting on your skin, at least it kind of acts as like a protective barrier from your environment. So I prefer zinc oxide sunscreen. And the one I use is from Suntegrity. This is their five in one natural moisturizing face sunscreen. So this is what I use during the day as my sunscreen normally anyways. So I know it works well with my skin. It doesn't really irritate my skin either. But if I'm at home all day, and my skin is super irritated, I might even skip that sunscreen as well and just avoid the sun. Because I find, again, the less products and stuff you're putting on your skin, the better. I also can say too is, is that you don't wanna be putting all the stuff on your face that's hard to get off. Because again, you don't wanna irritate your skin when you're washing it. So that's another reason why like the first few days when my skin is like super irritated to really speed up healing, the less products I'm using on my skin, the better. So that's what I would do during the day. Now, what about like makeup and stuff? I wouldn't even use makeup. If I need to use a makeup, like it's desperate, then I would recommend using a mineral makeup, okay? As opposed to a mainstream makeup that again, goes into your skin. Mineral makeup always sits on the surface of your skin. And I would use what I really like, especially for irritated skin, is the RMS. And this is their Uncover Up. And I would use that just to spot conceal. Like let's say I've got like a lot of redness on my face and I'm going out and I need to kind of like hide that. Then I will use the RMS and cover up to just spot conceal those areas. I wouldn't use like foundation and stuff all over my face. And I, what I like about this concealer in particular is, is that it's quite emollient and there's not many ingredients in it. There's no like essential oils, there's no fragrance, there's nothing that's gonna irritate your skin. And because it's so emollient, it also just helps to hydrate the skin as well. So this would be my choice for like really irritated skin. And basically that's what I would do during the day. Now, what do I do at night to get rid of like the sunscreen and, and the makeup and, and wash my face? So because I'm wearing sunscreen, it won't just come off with water. I need to actually wash my face with something. And I, first of all, I don't recommend, like out of all the cleansers out there, when you have red, raw, irritated skin, I recommend staying away from any foaming cleansers. Even if it's a foaming cleanser that doesn't have like sodium lauryl sulfate, which is very well known to being very irritating and drying, you don't wanna use any foaming cleanser because all foaming cleansers have surfactants that make it foaming. You know, even if it doesn't have the SLSs in it, surfactants, even though some of them can be more gentle than others, when your skin is like red raw and irritated and like sensitized, even the gentlest foaming cleanser is just too, it's too much, it's too stripping. You really, I recommend you use a cleanser that is oil-based, so it's gonna just replenish the oils in your skin as opposed to stripping them off. And so my recommendation then would be to use an oil-based cleanser that you can rinse off with water. Because the one thing is, is that when your skin is like red, raw, and irritated, you don't wanna do like oil cleansing method with a, like a wet washcloth because that washcloth is so irritating on irritated skin. Like when your skin is normal, it's fine, but even the softest wet washcloth is still potentially irritating and you just don't wanna hurt that skin that's already kind of raw and achy. So my recommendation is to get a cleanser that is either like a milk cleanser or a balm cleanser or even an oil cleanser, but as long as you can rinse it off with water and also to avoid any cleanser that has 
like fragrance in it, that has essential oils in it, that has any kind of um, like exfoliating enzymes or exfoliating acids or any kind of strong ingredient or active ingredient, you want to just avoid that. It really should be the most plain, basic kind of moisturizing cleanser, you know, that doesn't have any alcohols in it, like doesn't have anything that could potentially dry out your skin or irritate it or throw it off balance. Now, what I do is, and this is what I've found works the best for me when I've got really irritated skin, is I like the dry oil cleansing method. And I've done a video of this, okay? And I will put a link to that video. Basically what you're doing is it's similar to the regular oil cleansing method, but you're not using a wet washcloth, you're using a dry cloth. And basically what I do is I like to use like a one ingredient oil. I don't want to use an oil that has any essential oils in it, no botanicals, nothing. Okay, like just like a basic oil. And I use anything that's on hand. I don't necessarily like go out and find something. So while my skin was like red, raw and irritated, I was using the ordinary, this is their argan oil. And I found this to be like a good oil for oil cleansing because it's, it's like a medium weight. It's not too heavy and it's not too light. So I can work it into my skin and get rid of the, the sunscreen help to sort of penetrate it and break it up off my skin. And then what I do is I use a very, very soft, lightweight cotton cloth. And this is smooth. It's not like a heavy washcloth. And this is dry. I don't wet this. And what I do is I put the argan oil all over my face and massage it into my skin. And then I pat my skin with this. And as I'm patting my skin, which doesn't irritate it because I'm not rubbing this on my skin, as I'm patting it, the oils actually lift off onto this cloth. And I find this to be the gentlest, most sort of therapeutic way of cleansing irritated skin. And I recommend, like if you're interested in trying this out, I recommend watching my video that does a full demo on how to do it and going through it. Because this is what I did when I, when I was pregnant with my second daughter. And back then my skin was like super dry and very, very dehydrated and nothing was helping it. And this was the only thing that I found that really just sort of locked in the hydration and at the same time cleansed my skin. And it's just so gentle and nice. So I will put a link to the demo of how to do this, but that's what I would do at night is literally just do dry oil cleansing. So there's no water being used. I'm using, I'm pretty much just patting the oil off my face. And then I would follow it by using the ordinary, this is their rosehip seed oil. And I love this stuff. This is really one of my favorite facial oils like ever. Um, and I use probably like two or three drops of this on my face as a moisturizer for overnight because pretty much I, since I live in the tropics, I have to sleep with air conditioning and air conditioning dries out my skin. And when my skin is like super red, raw and irritated, the last thing it needs is air conditioning. Air conditioning is like the equivalent to indoor heating. It just pulls out all the moisture from your skin. And if your skin is already compromised, it makes it worse. So I like to use the rosehip seed oil as my moisturizer just to protect my skin pretty much from the elements. But let's say I wasn't sleeping with air conditioning and the air was not dry and everything's good, then I would skip a moisturizer completely. I would just do the dry oil cleansing and that's it. But because my skin is, you know, needing a little bit more, I would use the oil. Now, one thing I also want to mention too is that I remember too that the first few days that my skin was really, really irritated, I actually put on oil twice. Like I would wash my face, put an oil on right after washing my face, and then right before I went to bed, I would put another two or three drops of oil on my skin before bed. And I just felt like I needed that extra. So if you feel like, you know what, like it's just not enough, like a few hours later, it's fully absorbed into your skin and your skin feels like red, raw and irritated, put a little bit more oil on your skin to see if that can help. I wouldn't do that more than twice in the evening. I just wouldn't be putting oil on your skin throughout the day.
Like I wouldn't keep repeating this for like every few hours, putting more and more oil, because I think that that can actually irritate your skin more. But once a day, especially at the end of the day, if you feel like you need to put like another coat on before going to bed, then do so. But I wouldn't do more than that, or else it becomes too excessive and you can throw your skin off balance, okay? So you always have to find like a happy balance with things, because sometimes things can be very therapeutic, but too much of it can mess things up. So basically, that would be my skincare routine, what I would do when my skin is irritated and sensitized. And I find in general that if I follow this for a few days, my skin gets back to normal pretty quick. The moment I start thinking, hmm, maybe I should use this product or try that, that's when I start running into issues. And I find just using one product that isn't working with the rest of the routine can throw things off that you know you, you have to deal with he trying to heal your skin for even longer. So basically what I noticed is that if I use something that irritates my skin and I used it only once and I had a bad reaction, my skin gets back to normal pretty quickly, within a few days. If let's say I'm using a product over a long period of time that is just slowly irritating my skin, that can take longer to heal my skin. So an example might be like if you've been overly exfoliating your skin and it seems fine in the beginning, but later on, boom, your skin is like super irritated. It might take a while to heal that. It could take a few weeks. Um, same thing with using a retinol is that a lot of times people use retinol and they're working their way up with it and then boom, they have a really bad reaction. And a lot of times that's not just like a one-time use of a bad reaction, but it's something like over time it's been building up and that can take like weeks or sometimes even a few months to really get your, cell, your skin back to normal. So you have to be patient. And I wouldn't rush back into your regular skincare routine until you really feel like your skin is healthy, it's balanced, it's resilient, it's strong, it feels good. Because this gentle skincare routine is perfectly healthy and supportive for your skin. And you know, if you're concerned with sunscreen, especially like you're like, oh, well, you know, I'm afraid not to go too long without sunscreen. Well, at least for the first few days, skip the sunscreen. And then once you feel like your skin can handle it, then start using it, you know? But every day kind of feel things out. But when it comes down to using like active ingredients like vitamin C or any kind of um, AHA or BHA, like exfoliating acids or using exfoliating enzymes, or even using like hyaluronic acid um, and any retinols, I would, I would wait. I would give it a few weeks before you start using that stuff. Really pace yourself because there's no rush and you don't wanna hurt your skin. Now, I do wanna give a few other suggestions with lifestyle, okay? With your diet and your lifestyle, how to also just support your body to heal your skin. Because how I see it is that it's kind of like, you know, when we're sick with the flu, right? Like if we eat healthy food and we take care of ourselves, then our body can heal itself much faster and we can get over that sickness. Well, I feel like it's the same thing with having any kind of a skin irritation is that if you allow your skin to your body to be healthy and you're supporting the health of your body, it can actually heal your skin much faster. So my recommendation is with your diet is to really cut down or avoid any irritating or inflammatory food, any food that causes heat in the body. Because a lot of times, if you ever feel your skin when it's irritated, it, it's hot and you don't wanna increase that heat. And that's why a lot of times like I'll say, avoid a hot shower, avoid things that are gonna make your skin hot because that will just inflame your skin more. And so same thing with your diet is that I would avoid things like alcohol, I would avoid coffee, I would avoid like chili peppers, like super spicy food, I would avoid processed food, I would avoid sugar, pre-made foods, things like that. I'd really stick to eating fresh, whole foods. So eating a lot of vegetables. Green vegetables in particular are very anti-inflammatory. So you wanna like bump up the green vegetables, have more salads, have green smoothie or green juices, um, have herbal teas, Having hydrating your body with water-rich foods and water and, and healthy drinks also will help your skin and having fruit as well it's got the antioxidants in it and it just overall is good for your health that i would have healthy fruit i would just have wholesome foods and avoid things that are processed also as well i would recommend 
your living space to be supportive of healing your skin. And what that means is I would, if you can get a humidifier so you can put some water or moisture into your air, especially when you're sleeping. I'd also avoid direct sunlight, so no sunbathing. Like if you can draw the curtains down a little bit, that can help. Like I know for myself, when my skin is red and raw and irritated and I'm outside and the sun is on it, it just makes it worse. My skin just stings. So the less you're exposed to that, the better. You know, the more you're kind of like shielding your skin and just letting it heal, the better. And then I would say the last thing is also making sure you get good sleep, you get good rest, and exercise can be good. I find for myself that exercise and sweating and like it's almost like the salt in in my sweat is very therapeutic on my skin but if my skin is overly irritated sometimes that's too much as well so if you notice that you go and exercise and your skin it just feels so like itchy and raw and like achy when you're like sweating and exercising and you just kind of want to pull your skin off <laughs> you know that feeling <laughs> i know that feeling don't exercise then then take a break from exercising until your skin is more balanced because it's just just too irritated for that you know and this is not forever it's kind of like the more you baby your skin and, and treat it really really delicately and really well the faster it will heal and then you can get back to your regular routine all right so these are my tips for a skincare routine for irritated skin I'd love to know what you do when your skin is like red, raw, and irritated what kind of skincare routine you have for irritated or sensitized skin all right, so I'm wishing you a fabulous day, and if you enjoyed this video, please like it, please subscribe, and I will see you again soon. Bye.